Are you ready? No. Not really. No. I said, are you ready? I told you, no, I'm not ready. Come on. <sighs> Don't you ever listen? You know what? Screw it. For the people in attendance and the YouTubers watching at home, ladies and gentlemen, this is not another wrestling podcast. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm Jay. This unready son of a biscuit is Connor. Hi. And we are talking WWE Great Balls <laughs> of Fire. Uh, I already feel dirty. Yes. We deliberately chose this logo version because there is another one online. But we felt this summed it up perfectly. Better. Yes. Goodness gracious... It looks like a dick. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, with that all said and done, um, thank you very much for listening to the Not Another Wrestling Podcast. We're probably going to get kicked off the air at any point. So, let's go. No, anyway. Um, anyway okay. Let's carry on. So, if you guys listened to the previous Not Another Wrestling co- uh, blah, 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 blah. Really Podcast, really quite. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, if you guys listened to the previous Not Another Wrestling Podcast, thank you very much and thank you for coming back. That's the uh, one thing we want to start off with here. We appreciate that. We appreciate everything. Exactly. You guys being here is the best thing. So, um, we are going to carry on. This is another podcast Wrestling. predictions. No, the, an, another another podcast predictions episode. So, um, as we did before, we're going to run through the matches in the order that we think they're going to happen. Um, so, we got them wrong. <laughs> Quite badly. <laughs> last time around. I'm not supposed to know, Jay. I'm meant to go and find out. <laughs> enough time has passed between money in the bank and now but we will very uh, quickly we're going to touch on this real quick because we said we was going to touch on this in the um the follow-up yep. episode of the fallout so the fallout from the women's money in the bank ladder match was carmella won the uh money in the bank with the help of ellsworth and she won it again on smackdown the following week meh i guess okay I'm proud cool. of her. you're still happy because that gives you an extra one up so technically you won Still, or no, technically it was still a draw. We're all good on that. Yeah. Let's let's go on Scrape Balls of Fire with our predictions. So, we're going to run through this in our order. Obviously, we all know that the kickoff show is going to be the main thing. The kickoff show being um, the Cruiserweight Championship match. We're actually of... taking rather interest in this. I've taken rather good interest in this because it's... Uh... It's a true to it match, and it's for the title. It's yeah. Actually, I'm actually I... looking forward to it. The, the, the only thing I'm a little bummed about is that it seems like the cruiserweights are not being taken seriously anymore so mm. our match is akira tozawa love the guy awesome against yep. neville again another awesome guy very underused talent brilliant that he's still champion loving the run this hill uh neville is absolutely fantastic what it's do we think i am i'm kind of torn down the middle here for this one i really am i think Neville's time is coming to an end of being champion. Right. Because he's had it since what? Before, before Mania. Right. Um, since like towards the end of last year. Um, when did he beat I Kendrick? So. Yeah, he beat Kendrick somewhere around this year, I think. No, did he not beat Alexander? Cedric Alexander? Oh, sorry, no, Cedric back. Alexander, that's the thing. Yes, sorry, he my beat Alex- Cedric Alexander last year. And he's held it ever since. No, no, no. It definitely was this year because he showed up at the UK tournament, which was in January, and he wasn't champion then, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, guys, please correct us here when we're wrong. We have, uh, I'm pretty sure he's had it since because he came hmm. back, he attacked TJP, and he attacked Cedric Alexander See, after I thought... the match. And then did it I... not happen like, at Roadblock or something? Did he not win at Roadblock? It might have been, but I think that was after the UK tournament, because I I'll remember check. when he Put turned up, um, at, when he showed up to go against Alistair Black at the uh, UK tournament, or Tommy End, whichever one you know him as, mm. um, he didn't have a title. He did not have the Cruiserweight Championship, and that was one of the things he was going on about, that he should have been in the UK Championship tournament, um, and he was left out, which personally I think he should have been in the UK Championship tournament, but that's a completely different thing. Um, but either way, he's had it for a long enough time that, yes, WWE will probably no doubt be saying, okay, look, Adrian. Adrian! It's about time you uh, lost that thing. 
And we probably yeah. want to have the Japanese market as a big thing because, I mean, look, we've got Asuka as champion. We're not really using Shinsuke mm. as well as we should on SmackDown. Um, we want Akira to be champion. But the thing is, like, the Cruiserweights have gone back from, oh my god, look how awesome they are in the Cru Cruiserweight Classic, to, eh. They're not allowed to do flips, they're not allowed to do a lot of stuff that we loved from that. You were right, you won it this year, you won it at the Royal Rumble. Ah, there we go, Royal Rumble. Um, there we go. So, as we were saying when it came to um, him going against Ares, this was before we started podcasting, um, we thought that he's a, I mean, he's a brilliant champion. Yeah. And they are, really they are using him really well as a um, heel champion, because I'm loving the heel run more than the um, face run. It's definitely, uh -huh. definitely, definitely running a lot better than that. Um, but... And my apologies for hearing my uh, Twitter go off. Apparently, I did not mute those like I thought I did. There you go. We, that's how raw and live we are, guys. That's how raw and live this is. Really <coughs> um, okay, so going going back to the Cruiserweight Classic real quick. Akira Tozawa really stood out in that for me when I was watching it. Loved the way the guy worked. He's not been able to work as well as that, obviously, under the main roster restrictions. Mm -hmm. But it's I... Yeah, I don't do what they've done during the Cruiserweight Championship tournament, but I think hey -ho, I think it's the Vince they've, McMahon syndrome. They've still, they've still done rather well. They've taken it. Exactly, it's the Vince and McMahon syndrome, and it's the as Randy Orton would say, dot dot dot, dive. Yeah, but there we go. Okay, so we're gonna run our first prediction. Pre-show doesn't normally count. It's a championship match. We don't know whether we're gonna have another surprise match on the card or a surprise match on the pre-show itself. Um, I just realized it looks like the, uh, the balls from the Great Balls of Fire are about to teabag Akira Tozawa. Um, <laughs> poor guy. Just like he's through dodgeball, yeah. Yeah. So, um, where are we going to stand here? I'm a little torn between who's going to win, but what do we think? I'm going to say Tozawa. I'm going to play devil's advocate just because we don't want it to end up as it was last time. I'm going to say Neville's going to retain. Right. For the main, like, partially for the fact of the reason that I want us to possibly go um, opposites this time, maybe, so that we have a J versus Connor situation, so we don't end in a one, yeah. one all draw on this one. Um, you, but at the same time, you want you're doing it because you want it to be a different result, but you you technically want Tozawa to win. <laughs> I see. I want Tozawa to win, but at the same time, I I would not be annoyed if Neville carried on. Like I know that's the thing. That's why I'm torn. It's just like. If Neville kept a in championship fact, run, in fact, no, I'm, I'm in fact, no, I'm, I'm changing it. I'm no, going Neville. No, nope. first Neville. choice, first, first choice Neville. picks, first he's choice picks. No, Neville. No, nope. first choice picks. No, 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 no. First choice picks. Neville. I've got Neville. You've got Tazawa. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to uh, see how this one works out. I won't lie. If Tazawa wins, not going to be annoyed. If um. Neville wins, still not going to be annoyed. I think it's going to be a good show from both. Yeah. I've, and it's a shame I've it's a kickoff. I've never really had a feeling that it could of what could happen. That's what I wanted to change, but hey -ho. It's just an absolute shame that WWE feels the need to stick it on the kickoff show, but yeah. that's just the way it is. I mean, look at WrestleMania, for example. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we will move on to our next uh, match, which is... Uh, the match that people are not seeing a point in, the uh, Enzo Amore versus Big Cass. Um, uh, the Bonafide uh, G versus the, uh, the Certified G versus the Bonafide Stud. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, I don't know, like, this, this rivalry's not had that much time to really build. They kind of, I, I liked the double swerve that they did. You know, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Cass attacked him after the whole build up. Okay, so it has had some build up of you know, like um, Enzo but being not attacked. the biggest, shall we say? Yeah, it's not like a feud for the ages. I don't think it's not like no. a good tag team breakdown feud that you would expect. Like it's had the you know, Enzo has been attacked from behind. Um, it got revealed it was Cass. Um, you know, after that we've had the whole oh. I didn't mean it. Uh, psych. Lol. I'm really a friend still. Lol. I'm not. I'm actually going to kick your ass and throw you down the ramp again. Yeah. 
I mean, it's one of these things that Vince sees a future. But like, if you read the dirt sheets, Vince mm. sees a future in Cass, doesn't see a future in Enzo. Mm -hmm. So this is his way of parting him so that he can basically use Cass to his heart's extent. What do we think? I'm thinking Cass just because it's simply a squash match. It literally is going to be a squash match. <sighs> I hate to say it, but I think you might be right. Like, I can see the underdog thing. I mean, what, what's, what's your opinions on this whole thing? What, what, what's your opinions on the breakdown here? Give us give us the uh, give us the Connor-approved breakdown. On the whole match, I honestly think it's a waste of time. Right. Some, some of have not had enough build-up like they should have done something a bit better. Like, I feel as though instead of having this match, they should have done something with Nia Jax being in there. Nia Jax though, being in there? Like, have Nia Jax, instead of having Angel vs. Cass, like, don't have that match at all. Let it build up a storyline. Right. But have Nia in there, taking on, like, say, the other girls, who she's been proving herself, and been proving herself against these other girls, and just dominating them. So, you're saying, totally strip the Anton and Cass feud from Great Balls of Fire, maybe make it pre-show worthy, and stick yes. another female match on the card? Yes. I'd agree, I think. I mean, okay, Enzo and Cass could have a good thing, because obviously you know each other really well, they've worked it's together. Got none of my interest in it at all. It, I think it's going to be the sleeper match of the night. It's going to be one of those ones yeah. that everyone's going to dismiss it. We think it's going to be the, the start of the show, because, well, I mean, come on, it doesn't really feel like it's going to be worth it. Um, so we're thinking show starter, mm -hmm. not really much to it, maybe, nope. let's say 10 minutes tops. 10, 15. I'd say maybe 10, because obviously we've got the 30-minute Iron Man match yeah. in the uh, equation. So they're probably going to be cutting a couple of matches short. If short it's time. if this isn't pre-show, then it's definitely going to be match starter. Like, sorry, uh, um, event starter. And <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those ones of, you know, Cass gets in the, the, the offense by quite a bit. Enzo has a comeback, then gets his ass kicked again. And one, yeah. two, three, Cass walks away. Mm-hmm. Um, since how you had last predictions, I'm going to take the prediction of Big Cass this time. It's my prediction side. Mostly for the fact that I'm thinking Vince is going to be sitting there rubbing himself with pleasure as the match goes on, going, yes, that's my new big guy that I want to be in a Continental Champion at some point. Yeah. Down the line. So, uh, my prediction here will be Big Cass. I want to be proved wrong. <laughs> so... I've said Big Cass already as well, so... Yeah. Okay. You know what? This is this will be our one match we'll clash with. Like, yeah. We'll have our clash match. So we're both siding with um with Cass on this one. WWE. With Cass and, and uh, prove us wrong. <laughs> I mean, hey, you never know. They put Jinder Mahal as WWE champion. You never know. <laughs> You never know. I think there's a bit of a difference between Enzo being champ, uh, like you know, Enzo beating Cass and mm. Jinder Mahal winning the championship, but. I mean, we're just sounding like Smarks right now. You which, don't really expect that, so. Yeah, expect. I'm guessing the basic, the new tagline of WWE's new generation since the last brand split is expect to the unexpected because it actually might happen for once. Yes. So, um, cool. here we go. Big cast both sides. This is our one uh, dual match. WWE, prove us wrong. Prove us Smarks wrong. Hopefully we... one and only. I've got a feeling we're probably going to agree on the main event. <laughs> I, just yeah. my feeling. Okay, I think the main event is going to be a no-brainer, but we'll get to that. Yeah, um, we'll get that so, prove us dirty marks wrong, WWE. Have Enzo win it. Have it as a good double-sided match. Let's have a good one. Guys, again, if you want to get involved in the um, predictions, please comment your predictions down below as we go. And we will be able to um, shout you guys out in the next episode. So, yeah. our next match. We the have Intercontinental in... Championship match. The Miz and his Miz Taraj. <sighs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's just let that sink in. The Miz and his Miz Taraj. Mm. Anywho. <laughs> stupid name is stupid. Against Dean Ambrose. I made the list. Oh, God. No, no, no. In the Dude. words of the mighty Chris Jericho. If it's going to be done in the words of Chris Jericho, you know what happens when you name your stu your stable something stupid? You know what happens? Huh? You just made the list! 
<laughs> Sorry, Jericho, no uh, no copyright infringement intended, but come on, it's an awesome line. Yeah. You got that shit over. Well played, ones. man. You got that yes. shit over. Um, so, sleeper match in terms of it's probably going to be a piss break for most people. Don't get me wrong, Miz's game has definitely improved since he started. Um, I'm loving the Miz since Intercontinental the Champion. Since the brand he has gone from being a mid carver to a top, top guy. He is definitely, definitely one of those top guys. Like, WWE, if WWE took him seriously and got rid of the stupid I am the Miz, I am awesome thing. And, well, I mean, keep the I am the Miz and I am awesome thing, but kind of make him more of a believable character, not the whole really, really crap that we had when he was champion or, you know, the whole Miz to Raj yeah. thing. Because the Miz to Raj is making it. I think he has one more big title run on him. I, you know what, I, I wouldn't have found myself saying this last year, well, maybe last year, but not a few years back. I would like yeah. to see The Miz as WWE or Universal, Universal. Champion. I think yeah. he could take it now. He's at the stage of his career where he could probably be taken seriously if they book it right. And he's, um, put, he's put prestige back on the Intercontinental, so just imagine what he can do with the others. Exactly, this is what I'm liking. The, the Miz Intercontinental Championship Reunion Tour um, is really good. The first tour was brilliant. How well he had that title, and he brought that prestige back to the championship after everything, yep. after the hot potato. And I, hands down, straight flat out, calling it now. I want the Miz to win. I don't like the way Dean Ambrose is as champion at the minute. I don't like the way they're booking him. Quite frankly, you know what I think they need to do. This is He's this born. is this is my take on Dean Ambrose right now. Mm-hmm. Loved the guy when he was doing his whole lunatic fringe thing when it was fresh and new and all of that when he was actually acting crazy you know seth rollins with the green paint in the the briefcase that was funny that was funny it was Ambrose. exactly he's boring Ambrose now um coming out what was it with a hot dog uh, hot dog cart and just um hot dog. you know all of that sort of thing that brought us yeah. the moment of if you looked in the corner of your screen you'll see randy orton laying on the floor munching down on a hot dog that was on the mat yes um you know um all that kind of thing that was brilliant but what I think they need to do is they need to write him off TV for a while with some big injury. Like, something big happens to him. Um, and when he comes back, he's not Dean Ambrose anymore. Or even if he's running still with the name of Dean Ambrose, they need to take him back to a semi-PG-friendly version of John Moxley. Mm. Now, for anyone that doesn't know his John Moxley um, character, go watch him in CZW. He was insane! in czw under the name john moxley he was a czw champion i believe for quite uh -huh. a while um that guy like they tried to do that with the whole lunatic fringe thing it's not working they no. need they need to say look dean go back take some time you know take some time with your wife just become moxley again we'll give you freedom to do what you need don't go too far because obviously we're pg but be that guy like do something good. Time to chill. Yeah, just come back, reinvent yourself. That's what I, you need I to miss. Do. I miss Shield Ambrose. I miss Shield Ambrose. Shield Ambrose was kind of quiet and I miss the Shield crazy. Ambrose. He was good. That was a good Ambrose. I mean, the recent we like since he had the WWE Championship, we all know that was a placeholder run. I mean, okay, mm. we've got, we've gone off topic of talk, talking about the match itself, but we'll get back to that. But that was a placeholder run, and it didn't mm. feel great. Um, getting to the point where it I is mean, now, hell yeah, I'm glad he got champion. Yeah, he deserved it at the time. Having AJ beat him when they did was the best idea they ever had. Even Stone Cold uh -huh. said that he looked like he was lazy. And if you're getting someone like Stone Cold, a veteran of the ring like that, saying, "You're lazy," what's going on? Yeah, then there's something wrong. Yeah, then you need to start reinventing. What needs to, to be done is, I think, with the Wanderer that's been going around, I can't remember his name off the top of my head for some reason, it's just gone out of my head. You'll get that, carry on. But anyway, get, take him and Dean Ambrose and get them to work together, instead of just having Ambrose in the title picture. He's literally jumped from title picture to title picture to title picture to title picture. Yeah, he's kind of done a John Cena. It's about time he gets out of the title picture yeah just give him a fresh run he doesn't always have to be in the championship run like he doesn't always have to be in a championship scene i know wwe wants to build him as one of the future stars or you know he is 
a future star as it is, but I don't think he's at the level where he can always be in a championship picture and deserve it all the time at the minute. No. Okay, so back I to the match. Really a couple of people that can do that, but yeah. carry on. You know, um, okay, so back to the match. I'm seeing it as being a pretty decent match. Yeah. Um, you know, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas are probably going to get involved because, I mean, that's what mm -hmm. they're there for, aren't they? That's that's the way yeah. it works when you have an entourage now. Um, Maurice will probably get involved somehow. You can imagine, um, you know, you'll probably get the whole lunatic lariat set up from Ambrose and, you know, Dirty Deeds a couple of times or Skull Crusher Pounds uh -huh. and that lot. I can see it being a very good back and forth. Yeah. Um... We've seen it so many times. If it's getting to the point where it's just like, no, we need something new and fresh. It's turning into Cena Orton again. Yeah. We've said this before. Like, we said it in the last podcast with one of the other matches. It's turned, like, one of the other matches on Money in the Bank was basically turning into Cena Orton. That's what this is doing. It Miz Ambrose IC title. Miz Ambrose WWE title. Miz Ambrose out of the title picture. It's just... You could probably cut, copy, and paste this match just with a couple of extra people into a previous pay per view, and you've got the same thing. Yep. So I'm going for Miz to win this one based solely on the fact that I love the way he's working right now. He's a really good in ring performer. The whole um, doing the yes kicks, or as they've been renamed in his eyes, the Miz kicks, the taunt in Daniel Bryan, just, it's just teasing. It's just mm -hmm. teasing that Daniel Bryan return. Even though everyone's saying that it is not, will not, shall never happen. It's just teasing it. Especially with the talks that either Daniel Bryan is getting to the point of returning to the ring either for WWE or for an indie company because he's saying if he's not coming back in WWE he's going to Ring of Honor or he's going to an indie company to do that. I want to see this mm. happen before he leaves. If Daniel Bryan is going to walk out of that door, if WWE doesn't let it happen, it's a big, big loss. That is a money-making feud, especially with the way it's been built. But Correct. even if it builds up that Miz stays champion at Wrestle until WrestleMania, which is a long old time for him to keep that belt, but it would be good. And have him go against Daniel Bryan. One last match. Bryan wins, retires, whatever. Doesn't matter. No problem. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I'm calling Miz win on this one. Whether it's through I hate some... you. <laughs> <laughs> whether it's through some dirty deeds or not, no pun intended. I think no. Miz has this. It's unfortunate that leaves me with Dean Ambrose. I mean, g give us give us some counter points on what you think, like how you, like why you think Ambrose should win. Like, come on. I can't think of any. That's, that's, <laughs> I... That's how much I don't want him to win. Wow. I don't want him to win. I no. really don't. There we go. Well, that says a lot, doesn't it? Okay, well, in that case, uh, take it away for the, our next match that's coming up that we think is going to be going in this order is Seth Rollins Bray Wyatt. Mm hmm What do we think? I think this should possibly be a good match. The floor How, is yours right now, so feel yeah, free. Go to town, man. <laughs> I, it could be a good match. It's kind of been worked well-ish, shall we say? Yeah, it's been worked well-ish. I mean, what's it's the build-up to this been like? I've not it's seen been, much build-up from social media. It's cause... definitely been good. But it's been a very, very... It's been more talkative than anything else, but they're both laying the smackdown on each other. Literally. It's been really, really good to watch, like, see sort of thing and it's, it's new it's new as well it's new and fresh which is good which is really good to see the last time i fully remember seeing these guys going at it was um i mean i could be forgetting a couple of things here, but the last time i fully remember was um wyatt's versus the shield mm -hmm. on the main roster on raw back in the day i mean um i've got a little I'm side sure thought of it. I got a little side thought on something that I'd love to see down the line, and it's following on from um, something I watched on What Culture. Um, we can talk to we can talk about that towards the end. Um, yeah, I'm back. I I, I got to back who I go with a lot these days because he's my like he is my modern day guy. I want Wyatt to win just because I've you always, want Wyatt. I've been a Wyatt fan for a long time. Wyatt, is, I was absolutely over the moon when he got that title, and I was yeah. really peed off that he lost. So the fact that WWE was like, <laughs> <laughs> he has the title. No, he doesn't. 
Enjoy. Wait, he honestly deserves it. He has put, since the bracelet, he has put on the best work. Since he's been free of the Wyatt, Wyatt family, he has put on the best work. See, I think he's a brilliant solo competitor. Uh -huh. Absolutely fantastic as solo competitor. I love what he does with the Wyatts. I think the Wyatts are, like, the Wyatt family is what he needs. Like, the he under, like, he will do brilliant with or without the Wyatts. No matter what yeah. incarnation they give him of the Wyatts, whether it's, um, you know, the original Wyatts of him, Harper, and um, um, Rowan. Um, Rowan, thank you. I don't know why I forgot Eric Rowan for a minute. Um, you know, whether they do that or, you know, they go, okay, screw it, we're going to go uh, the new Wyatt family where they bring in, you know, um, Braun Strowman again. I, I kind of think this could happen soon. Uh, sanity join with the Wyatt because that would work very well. Oh, having I can see that working very no, well. No, I could see that being a brilliant feud. Yeah, all that as well. Now, that see what be something. That's what I'd love what? to see, I'd love to, yeah, the entirety of Sanity coming up to the main roster, even if it's just for this feud and getting kicked back to NXT for a while. Because Eric yeah. Young is a brilliant leader. Eric Young is a leader of men. And if mm -hmm. he didn't, like, he didn't have the chance back in the day in TNA to lead the global elite, um, sorry, world elite, even, properly, because mm. they didn't book him right in that one. Uh, but that was TNA's history all over. Let's just... TNA's a dead Leave company. It's it's now GFW Impact Wrestling. Um, yep. They they may go better now. I'm really hoping they'll go better because Jeff Jarrett's back in with creative and Jarrett did a good job. Anyway, um, that may be a podcast in and of itself. I think we need to give um, Impact a little give bit of love every now and then. Give yeah. it a chance to see how it, the boat flows. And if exactly. it sinks, it sinks and we will slate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll slate it maybe. It maybe. But um, yeah, like I would love to see. And this could... This has nothing to do with this match, so uh, guys, if you're wanting this match, I'd say skip ahead about five minutes and we'll get back to it. But um, I would love to see down the line we have another Wyatt family break, like get together. You've got Bray Wyatt, you've got you know the original and, the original Wyatt family, the original Wyatts, possibly with, with Braun Strowman, but I don't think Braun Strowman will be in this one with. And no. if, I think you're going to say the same thing as me, aren't you? Possibly. Let's see what you're saying. Are we thinking Bo Dallas? Yes. Outside of the bow leave character, mm -hmm. give him that darker look. Like I'm also thinking, because oh. Sanity, if I'm right, they have a female, don't they? They do. Yeah. They yeah, have. Um, they have. Uh, and Sister Cross. Abigail is someone of this ancient power. No, oh, no. I'm gonna stop you there. Sort of Let me stop you there real quick. No physical Sister Abigail. That thing is. A, that mm. is a mindset. That Sister Abigail, I think, should never be a physical person. It'd be cool to see. Don't get me wrong, it would be very cool. I mean, if they could get Rosemary from GFW, yes, whatever you want to call, whatever you want Rosemary to call the company, is the perfect person for that. Bring in Rosemary with that crazy psycho gimmick, but she's not Sister Abigail. She believes she's Sister Abigail, yes. and, and she has to work her way into the mind. With her, you know what? We're gonna uh, after this, we may just record a how WWE could book a Wyatt family. Um, podcast real quick because uh, this is a good little thing anyway we'll get back to the match we'll get where we need yeah. to go we'll do some good stuff we'll either leave this one till the end of the podcast or we'll record the second one after that so um, I'm seeing it as an, again it's another back and forth I'm, I'm thinking we're going you're going Seth Rollins yes I'm going Bray Wyatt Seth I want... been on go Seth on. I see I'm not really bothered who wins but I would want Seth to win because I feel so he's now the cover boy of the WWE game it should look prestigious and stuff because I've got a feeling because I've not seen Stephanie or Triple H since WrestleMania. I've got a feeling they could be coming back possibly very soon. Could work. See the and authority could, back. Yeah. Well, that's apparently what this Kurt Angle thing is. We'll get we'll touch on the yeah. Kurt Angle thing at the end of this real quick in the end the other business yeah. part. Um, okay, I'm thinking this is going to be a typical. This is like this is going to be what they do best. There's going to be like you know really cool spots. You're going to have the whole back and forth of the way they work. These guys will work brilliantly together. This is a win match. There is no losers in this match. Whatever we see is going to be worth watching. If you walk out during this match, then you're probably going to miss something decent. Um, and hell, anything is better than the damned um, House of Horrors match. Mm. <laughs> I mean, if this is a lead up to... I mean, I'm seeing Rollins win mm -hmm. because of uh, why it's history on pay-per-view. I mean, how many times has he won on pay-per-view? Yeah. Um, outside of the Wyatt family. Um, 
Last one I think was Elimination Chamber. I believe so. His championship reign. Um, so that lasted what for about weeks? a month. Yeah, lasted about a month. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna have a Rollins win for your reasons of you know he's cover boy. You need to kind of mm -hmm. make him make Rollins look strong. The meme that went out yeah. about um, you know Roman. Um, yeah. But I'm happy with whoever wins. I want to see Bray win. But I think Rollins has this. I'll stick with Bray for optimism. But I think you're okay. right with Rollins. Yeah. Let's see if we're wrong. Again, guys, <laughs> if, uh, if you guys we're want... We're basically torn between some matches. So many... Gonna... You know what? This is the first time in a while that Raw has actually had a really good lineup. Yeah. Like, this is one of those lineups that I'm happy to sit there and watch. I, I don't... With Raw, it's like they can have either really good matches who worked wonderful, or they just fall on their feet. However, their show is to either make it look good, make it all nice and pretty. It's like like when you see a game trailer. It looks absolutely amazing, then you get the real thing. It's utter crap. Yeah, it's like WWE have got two That's what things. Raw is, basically, right now. That's what Raw is at times. Exactly. Smackdown Raw... is the only show. <laughs> Smackdown and NXT are the only ones that are just going. It's, it's sort of like... Um... Keeping it up, going. Keep raising the bars. Exactly. You've kind of got Raw, which is the E3 uh, E3 gameplay trailers. Yeah. And you've got SmackDown, which is the game release. Yes. <laughs> that's the best way that I can think about it. That's topical. That's relevant to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and um, kind of sums everything up. Uh, you know, Raw has become the film release trailers. That oh look, there's such good things happening, and we're we're gonna have a brilliant blockbuster. Look at Jumanji. Let's not look at Jumanji because that's terrible. I mean, well, um, and then we have SmackDown, which is <laughs> we don't need trailers. We actually put on shows. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, our next match again. This is our lineup. This is what we're thinking. Um, we're probably going to be wrong like last time, but we are moving on to the Raw Tag Team Championships, the 30-minute Iron Man match, and I have a thought on this one, but I'm going to let you go first because my one might take a minute. I'm excited. I'm excited. This, this... Is really good. They have worked so damn well since, like, before they turned the heel, to when they've turned heel, to now, to this, to the two or three falls match that was on Raw a couple of weeks ago, now to this, and this looks absolutely insane. I'm reckoning it's... You can tell, though, before it even starts, it's going to go down to the wire. I want to. I want to quickly. Um, I want to very, very quickly interject here. So, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Connor is our week to week wrestling viewer. Um, that's why we have him. I am our pay per view to pay per view wrestling viewer. I've been watching yeah. wrestling since I was about six, nearly twenty years. Connor has been watching. I'm guessing just almost as long, or on and off. Uh, about fifteen years. Yeah, okay. I when I was five ish. With there my we brand. go. So we we still have um you know so we're we're a long time thing I couldn't yeah. watch like I can't watch wrestling on a weekly basis anymore unfortunately anyway um so Connor gives us our week to week views I'll give you the pay per view views that kind of thing that's how we're working in case you guys wonder yeah. why I'm always going uh, 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 uh. so right <laughs> this match oh baby I never thought Shazara would work that's... I when they formed the first time I was like uh I'm... I kind of see where they're going with it, but at the same time, it's like, eh, uh, possibly. To be honest, I liked it when they didn't like each other. Yeah. Because, like, you know, uh, Shameless always interrupting Sh uh, uh, Cesaro's entrance, or Cesaro yeah. always interrupting Shameless' entrance. That worked uh, so well. I do... It was funny. It really was. But I do like the new them. I do like the way they've been doing, like, with the... I do. They come out in the kilts and stuff. That is really cool. This This is a team that I want to see go. Like, this is a team yeah. I would love to see go. If they break them up anytime soon, then it's a big loss to everyone. It's an we... absolute disaster. We know what WWE's like with breaking up their teams these days. Um... However, these two... They are basically the... It's like a double... It's like a coin. SmackDown would be heads, Raw is tails. SmackDown's tag team, like, main uh, story tag team is Usos and Anudi. They can go the length. I'm feeling as though the Hardys and Cesaro can go the length. I can definitely see this going to this. I gotta agree with you on that one. I can see this going to distance. I can also see this be a perfect setup for 
somebody maybe possibly getting deleted and yes. fading into obsolete. Excellent. Yes. Oh, the, the condition of Matt Hardy may start to show even more. Now, okay, I'm a Dirt Sheets guy. I won't lie. This is how mm. I keep up to date with everything. I love my Dirt Sheets. I love, um, you know, WrestlingNewsSource.com, all that kind of stuff. Yes, Ben, you just got a shameless plug. You're not even probably going to listen to this, but whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have the guy on Facebook, the guy who runs uh, WrestlingNewsSource.com. That's how I get a lot of my, uh, my wrestling yeah. stuff. Um, so, like, rumors have it that the Hardys are very, very close, if not already signed a deal with Anthem, uh, Anthem Sports yeah. to let them use the broken gimmick. That's yes. why Matt has been teasing, you know, this ancient vessel can no longer be contained. Like, if you guys have not seen his tweets, go to Matt Hardy's Twitter and, what, like, read them. He, uh, oh, so he is, like, just amazing. He is either, he is obsolete. brilliantly... Obsolete. Like, if he, he is either doing one of two things, man. He is either brilliantly trolling us like Rusev did at like Money Rusev, in the Bank. Yes. <laughs> or he is... <laughs> He's showing us that it's coming. Yes. And it's coming soon. Because, oh, I cannot... Oh, if WWE gets the broken gimmick, I'm so hoping they do it right. Because if... what they need to do... Exactly. What they need let to Matt do is... And let him run with it. Exactly. Matt needs creative control, creative freedom. That's it. He Because need... what I want to see, if, 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 we get the... if we get the Wyatts back together, the Wyatts versus the Broken Hardys, bang, money. You've got that. You have money yes. in the Broken Hardys, or at least Broken Matt versus Bray Wyatt. That is a feud. That is money. That is championship I... material. I can see that. I can see the Broken Gimmick happening with, and I can tell you how it's happening with my prediction. I believe the Hardys are going to win. Okay. Just, it'll be a one to three the bell goes they've managed to win it say 2-1 that's my scrolling I'm predicting the scrolling will be 2-1 Hardys they just get the final pinfall just within a second right so you're calling right down to the wire with the final yeah. pin for Hardys okay yes and you think Cesaro <laughs> then furious with what's happened starts swinging chairs breaking it breaking everyone just attacking the Hardys next night on Raw they come out, completely new music for the Hardys, completely new everything. Broken Gimmick is born. See, okay, see, now I'm liking that. But i got to make a few changes. Mm. Hardys don't win. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing it like this, right? For the Broken Gimmick to truly, truly happen, the Hardys got to be so close to winning that... Maybe it comes down to the wire really, really close, right? You know, maybe it's like mm -hmm. uh, one fall apiece. The Hardys get the one, two, bell rings before the hand hits three, right? Yeah. We're in overtime. This is how I could imagine it would go in the Attitude Era, at least. Or, you know, at least yeah. like seven years ago or something. Um, so we're in overtime, JR, as the King would have said. If you guys remember the Iron Man match between Kurt Angle and um, Chris Benoit... Um, yes, that guy does exist. Um, and he'll always exist. I can I can see it being that. And I can see this overtime fall. Because in an Iron Man match, anything goes, right? No DQs, yeah. no submissions, anything like that. Unless WWE have put that stipulation in there. That's where uh, Sheamus and Zara kind That's of look right. at each I other. I went with the fact of they've like, obviously been beaten up a lot already. Then I've going to beat them up to the point where it's like they're just struggling to get up. They're struggling to... See, I'm seeing it as Move. the Stop final thing. fall not counting. You know, you get the you get the arguments. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was free. That was free. And then you know you get the ring announcer saying, "No, we are in overtime. The, the next fall wins it, or the next pinfall submission wins it." Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and then that's when Sheamus and Cesaro sort of look at each other. Next thing you know, under the ring, tables, kendo sticks, chairs, ladders. They just whatever. They just go absolutely crazy on the Hardys. To the point yes. where they're throwing them through a barricade, they're power bombing them through a, the announce table, smashing them through a ladder. You know, they just go hell for leather, like to the point where the Hardys have to get to, or at least Matt has to get taken out on the stretcher. They pinpoint Matt. You know, they power yeah. bomb Jeff through the announce table, 
pinpoint Matt, take him out. They absolutely destroy him. He can't mm -hmm. get up. He gets taken out by the EMTs. He gets carried out. You don't see the Hardys on Raw for a couple of weeks. Maybe a month, right? Mm -hmm. Gives Matt time to go back. He can get some new gear, um, change the hairstyle. Maybe they can get uh, Ruby Hardy in, you know, come back with the whole thing. I know she's not long given birth to um, uh, Wolfgang, their other little kid. Congratulations, by the way. It's a bit late, but yep. I mean, whatever. Um, Congrats. You know, we another, have the, we have the broken the Hardys. The lead everyone else <laughs> exactly the baby the baby um, the leapest. you know we we have we have the broken hardies come out in a couple of weeks to a month's time matt is different and the voice is back no vanguard still one. face still face yes the broken hardies are all face. face like broken hardies a face everything is exactly as it should be but matt and jeff are broken are broken Brother Nero. Brother Nero comes out. It's not Matt Hardy. It's not Jeff Hardy. It's Matt and Brother Nero. Broken Matt and Brother Nero. And you have <laughs> gold. They yes. go. You have you Cesaro. Have gold. You have you, gold, basically. If you bring that broken gimmick out. Exactly. You have the. Now what you do? You have money. You have uh, was it SummerSlam or wait? SummerSlam was our next big one. Um, yeah, SummerSlam. I think is after Battleground. Yes. So we basically have the feud leading up to about, uh, um, SummerSlam. You have the Broken Hardys against Shazaro. Titles are on the line in an Anything Goes match. Mm -hmm. This is turning into a How WWE Should Book. Um, Two and... out of three falls. Yes. Hell. No, no, no. The death, uh, three... Not oh, even, not even two about... to... Three stages of hell. That's it. That's Street it. Street fight. Yep. Armageddon, Triple H versus Shawn Michaels, that one. Exactly. Uh, or, uh, Stone Cold, yeah, or Stone Cold, Triple H in the very first one. You have three yeah. stages of hell ending in like a ladder match or something. It was... Broken it went... Hardy's win. I think it went... <laughs> Steel... It went... Street Fight, Steel Cage, ladder match. I think. Or something like that either way something. we get we get this feud leads up to survive uh, you know to SummerSlam. broken hardy's winner titles there this match yeah. that happens here shazaro win i'm going with shazaro because i mean it's it's got to be a given that they're going to win mm -hmm. this they're not going to take it from him this quickly i want to see this be the build up to the broken hardy's i want to see this be broken hardy's annihilate them down the line but they need to be destroyed to the point of to hell with it to the point of deletion they need yes. to delete the hardy boys and destroy what we know for the broken hardies to work i think mm -hmm. we're both in agreement on this one aren't we we're on another tie i've said hardies though i want hardy to your hardies okay yeah. hardies for you shizaro for me We've taken far too long on this. We're already at a 43 minute mark. This is going to be longer than an hour, guys. I apologize, but this is a good pay per view. This is really I'm good. And the ideas are flowing. As well. Exactly. The ideas are flowing. So we're going to move along. Ambulance match. Strowman for the win. I've already <laughs> told it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. Strowman for the win. Strowman um, needs to win this. Enough said. No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Strowman needs to win this because he is the baddest mother biscuit. Dude. Forget it. We're not WWE PG. Go for it. Like we can allow baddest a couple of swears. Motherfuck, baddest motherfucker on Raw. I do not care about Lesnar. I do not care about Joe. He is bad. He is money. You give him a title shot, a universal title shot against either Lesnar or Joe. He will make it work, and he will make that title relevant, and he will make it personal, and he will make sure he has earned it. He has definitely earned it over the past year since the brand split. He needs that title shot. Counter argument. The streak. What I was to say. Sorry. Yeah. Un Undertaker. Uh, mm, but at the same time, Undertaker he's had no. his dude. Lot, he's dude. Counterpoint. That's that's all we can say. Roman Reigns, WrestleMania. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I don't. He's... Okay. Uh, I I'll explain a little bit. <sighs> we all know how it is. Roman Reigns is the new John Cena. He'll get booed down mm. of the building, but Vince McMahon doesn't care. He's going to be big match Roman. Um, Super Samoan. 
punch, punch, punch me as much as you want. Throw me into anything. I'll come back. Superman punch you, spear you. I'll still win. They're basically... Like, he's developing those five moves of Doom. You know, yeah. he is becoming the next John Cena. They are clearly saying Roman Reigns is going to be the face of the company. Um, I want Strowman to win. I am begging WWE to have Strowman win. Because mm-hmm. if he doesn't, why the hell would you build this match so much with him being a badass and tipping that goddamn ambulance before he was away for so- shoulder surgery? For him to come back and lose. Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. You know. Strowman needs to win this. And then they need to have him come out. And go. Huh, hey Roman. You know how you said. That no matter what. You're going against the winner of Joe versus um, Lesnar. At SummerSlam. I say. I just beat your ass into submission. I threw you into the back of an ambulance and you got cut out of here like a little bitch. He needs to say that, but WWE won't let them, him obviously yeah. say bitch, but, um, you know. Well, they've been getting, a, they've, been getting, they've been letting a bit more slide, sort of thing. If they, can, if they can at least get him to cut a promo saying how he kicked his ass into oblivion and won, yeah. and he goes, hey, I'm the number one contender, and if you want that championship... You're going to have to go through me. And it either sets up like a, a feud leading up to it again. Like carries the feud on leading up to um, a thing. Because I don't think this will be the blow off. I think there's still no, a bit of money it to be could. made in this. You can I just done that. Turn it into a triple threat match. At some That's time. exactly what I was going to say. If it doesn't turn it into a blow off where these guys are finished. Then we've got a triple threat on our hands. Mm-hmm. And that I'm looking forward to. Because that yes. could work really well. Especially if my pick for the main event wins. Mm-hmm. So um, we're gonna go for we're gonna make this one quick because I really couldn't care less too much about Roman Reigns winning or losing. You've gone for Braun Strowman. I've unfortunately yeah. got Roman Reigns. Sadly, I don't like. I want to say you told me so about Roman winning, mm-hmm. but sadly, mm-hmm. I get the feeling I'm gonna be saying I told you so. Yeah. With Roman winning, but I want it to be good. I want it to be like the old school ambulance matches. You remember Shane versus Kane at um, yeah. Survivor Series 2003? I mean, that that was an ambulance was match. match. That was brilliant. Like Shane coming off the top and all of that. You could have Braun Strowman, um, you know, choke bomb um, range through the roof of the ambulance to win the match. Yeah. I mean, come on. Or it could end up in the draw. They're both on top of the ambulance. He spears him through. The doors are already closed at the back. They fell, both fell through the ambulance. It ends in a draw. Could happen, but I don't see WWE having the mindset for it. No. I'm seeing not that it. Creative. Yeah, I'm seeing it being either Roman wins with some fluke as usual. You know, oh, yeah. Superman punch. He doesn't go down. He staggers at the doors. Superman punch. He's sort of sitting on the, you know, he's sitting on the yeah. the, the opening of the thing. Either a mm-hmm. third Superman punch and he topples in and Roman slams the door shut as quick as possible. Or they kind of gimmick it up or have someone interfere. I mean, I'd love to see them gimmick the roof or something like that where Strowman can push him through or someone goes through the roof or something like that, like what yeah. you're saying. But I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's going to be either Super Roman comes back with his Superman punches of doom and his spears of uh, survival or, you know, Strowman's actually going to have a damn good win. Mm-hmm. But um, let's move on. Next match, in our order, the women's championship match: Alexa Bliss versus Shasha. Shasha, 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 Shasha. Well, no, this kind of works. Shasha Banks, since how she's been dancing on the uh, 205 Live yeah. recently. Um, <laughs> Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss came out of the blue a little bit for me. Yeah. Won't lie, because last I heard, you were still having um, Alexa and. Bailey have a little bit of a thing. Mm. So, what have I missed? What What's the setup to this? Uh, it became they've done a gauntlet match basically of whoever is the last person standing at the draw, end of the gauntlet becomes number one contender. And it was Nia had destroyed everyone. Sasha Banks made her tap out, so it made it look Nia looked quite strong, but she was tired at the, at the end of it. So. So it wasn't a case of Sasha beat Nia. 
Nia's exhaustion beat Nia yeah. Jax. Okay, yeah. so they, they still booked her to look strong. You know what? I can almost see Nia Jax having a run in at some point. Because mm-hmm. she's been pretty tight with Alexa, hasn't she? Like over the past She has been, months. yes. So you can almost get a run in. However, I do want... I want this to be a good match. But I hope... In fact, I'll let you continue. I'll let you continue. Of who you want to win. I'll let you decide who you want to win. I'm thinking going by their NXT stuff that they've done. Like back in the day, if you've ever seen their matches in NXT, they had Mm -hmm. good matches in NXT. Obviously, um, Alexa wasn't at the stage of where she is now. Alexa has definitely come along well since she's uh, come up to the main roster and she's doing a damn good job at where she is. Yeah. I'm torn between the two. I love Alexa Bliss. Absolutely brilliant. Especially now they've got rid of the sort of Harley Quinn style gimmick. Yeah. Um, and let her go back to the little Miss Bliss of the sort of power hungry control freak that she was when she was with uh, Blake and Murphy in mm-hmm. um, NXT. NXT. But I also love Sasha. Like she's my modern day leader in the terms of who I would always vote for. You know, you know yeah. who I'd always push for. Not for the fact that, like, you know, Lita is a hell of a lot better of a competitor in so many different respects, but Sasha's just as good for a modern, like, you know, she's taken seriously as a um, Lita or a Trish Stratus or, because, mm-hmm. I mean, look at what they've done with her over the time. First ever women's Hell in a Cell match. Um, you know, one of the biggest matches on Raw, all that kind of stuff. They've pushed her. Mm-hmm. It'd be good to have her have a solid title run. Nonetheless. But- she needs to have a heel. Partial. No, she she needs to have a heel title run if she's de- if she's taking it. Like, mm-hmm. I want it to be like a triple threat. I want them to. Okay, here's my thinking. Right, mm-hmm. Alexa wins mm-hmm. through some kind of skullduggery. Maybe um, Nia Jax has a run in, so it's a DQ possibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, leads right. to a, a triple threat through a triple threat feud over the coming weeks. Because they've got to pass mm-hmm. some time. Or maybe main event it seems how, you know, if um, Lesnar wins, we'll still want to have a Universal Champion on Raw. Mm. Then, they have Bailey get involved again, somehow. Mm-hmm. Like, have Face Bailey get involved. And then it leads up to uh, SummerSlam. Fatal 4-Way, Women's Championship. Yeah. And I'm seeing one of two things happening. Um, Alexa's going to lose if it comes to a, trip, uh, a fatal four way mm-hmm. right I'm seeing either Sasha turns on Bailey and wins like she uh-huh. she just blasts her from behind with a bank statement you know hits the backstabber type thing rolls it into yeah. a bank statement out of nowhere bang she wins turns heel instantly on the spot bye bye Bailey uh, Sasha friendship uh, the hug and boss yeah. connection is dead um, or the other way around Bailey turns it like you know goes to hug her boom Bailey to belly out of nowhere one two three Bailey's uh-huh. your champion again she's turned on the crowd she's turned on all those followers she's not a hugger anymore she's pissed and she wants to be taken seriously but I think I, I don't think it's gonna happen I can see where you're coming from I'm thinking no, um, I, I, I'm going to like her I'm going to like go on are you take a like I think I like your food one on Sunday and then it, obviously you were saying with Nia Jax it's still going to go all up to comes up to the Fatal 4 with Action Virus Series however SummerSlam but go on Nia Jax wins oh could be good but who's champion Nia. at this stage Alexa Bliss is still champion Alexa still champ okay and Sasha comes up out with and it's say because Nia got involved or something. Yeah, like, she... Oh, you didn't win fairly, and it's just like, it's your fault. And eventually, Alexa Bliss just goes, you know what? Screw you. Screw you, Nia. Leave. And Nia just flips out. And starts attacking everyone. Like, starts attacking Sasha and Alexa. Sort of like a get out of my ring. I am the yeah. champion. Get out of my ring. Bang! Broadside. Yeah. Down she goes. I could see that. I could definitely see that. That and then fits Bailey the Night Jax character. Bailey comes in to save. Gets save for Sasha, obviously. Destroyed. Yeah. And then next, Trot Angle then comes out and announces Fatal Four Way match. Boom, boom, boom. These four 
Survivor Series. No, Survivor Series. Summer Slam. Summer Slam. Summer Slam. <laughs> yeah. Summer Slam. I tell you what, that's interesting. It's definitely an interesting one. And this time it won't be an elimination match. This time it'll be first of all to a finish. It'll, it'll be a championship scramble match. Oh, bring back an old match. Okay, mm -hmm. we'd need one more though for a scramble. Just to make it extra interesting. It's, championship scrambles has always mm -hmm. been a five person. Mm -hmm. So who would we Let's have? Leave Dana, Mickey James. Uh, Dana, who we've not seen or heard from for a while. Mickey James, who's basically gone into obscurity since um, <laughs> everything. Um, and there's obviously Alicia Fox there. You could have Alicia Fox, or or and bringing in from SmackDown here, ladies and gentlemen, cashing in on the Money in the Bank briefcase. We have Carmella. Uh, you know, it could happen because they never specified this just for the women's championship. Like they never yeah. said. You never know, Carmella could come cash yeah, in. Yeah, I, I suppose. You never know, they could pull that swerve, it would mm. be good. Okay, so here we go. Down to the wire, what are we thinking? Match is going to go how and who wins? Like, who's your prediction? How is the match going to happen? And what's the prediction? Just so we can get it down. Sasha wins, but through getting... Like, you're thinking... You're thinking outside interference is going to cause yeah. Sasha to win. Uh -huh. I'm seeing either a DQ win for Alexa or she goes over clean. Possibly some yeah. inter you know, interference from Nia, but I'm seeing an Alexa Bliss win. At least until SummerSlam. Now, yep. ladies and gentlemen. The biggie. Our main event. Event. Of the evening. Oh, the evening. Samoa Joe getting teabagged by the Great Balls of Fire sign. I mean, what? Um, <laughs> that'll still be a better match. Okay, so, yeah. out and out, calling it right here. Samoa Joe, I want to win. But I'm seeing really, Lesnar winning. I agree. I want Joe to win. I think everyone in the entire wrestling universe. Let's just start here. Joe to win. Dream and match. Lesnar is boring. He is disappearing. He oh, is Mr. Disappearo. The title was missing for about 10 years. He eventually comes back, does his squash match, eventually doesn't give it up, and then we'll give it up to Roman Reigns at SummerSlam just because he's bullshit. Exactly. So let's let that. that <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. That. Thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. This has been not another wrestling podcast. That's how we're going to rate it. No. Uh, right. So here's my thinking <laughs> get ready for a journey. Here we go. Yes. <clears throat> our favorite Russian ship. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Okay, so uh, here's what I'm thinking. WrestleMania was the last time we really saw Brock Lesnar properly, right? Mm -hmm. Wins the championship from Goldberg. Like, that wasn't predictable mm -hmm. enough. Then what happens? Oh, oh. I, wonder how, I wonder why that was predictable. Hmm. All of those squash matches beforehand, and Lesnar mm -hmm. already said, like, you know, um, Goldberg already said he was going to leave. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we have our th only third. Fourth, sorry, ever WWE Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar, wins the championship from WrestleMania. Has not been seen since, except for a couple of appearances on Raw. Brilliant. Okay, cool. In the meantime, while Whoop Lesnar's been... <laughs> Whoop -de -de exactly. Um, while Brock Lesnar's been sitting back, cashing in those fat checks and um, doing nothing, probably eating himself into oblivion and uh, training. Um, okay. Going... I am the champ, I am on to be, you know, I am on, blah, that thing, whatever. Um, the undisputed. Basically, yeah, conqueror. being, you know, I am the, the beast, the destroyer, the undisputed conqueror. I beat the streak. Yeah. You're a dick. Um, <laughs> like, he's not been seen for so long, since WrestleMania practically, and then you've seen a couple of appearances on Raw. Mostly it's been Paul Heyman doing it. on... Heyman has done the last few weeks. There you go. A couple of weeks, with which is Joe. However, I've done. The reason I'm saying Joe is going to win is because Joe has been getting the better of Lesnar every exactly. single They're time. They're picking it perfectly. Like this is what I'm loving. Okay, so here, this is this is where my where, where my brain's going. Joe damn here. nearly strangled Lesnar out. Yeah, it looked like he went legit on that choke. I won't lie. From what those pictures and the video that I saw, it looked like he went legit. Right. Here I was is... happy with that. Exactly. That I was so happy when I saw that. Right. Here's my here's my thinking. Okay. And I don't want to turn this into a how WWE should book because that's 
uh, Plumpy's thing. Nice. Um, Adam. That's, that, Adam. Adam, Adam, sorry, Adam. that it's it's Adam's thing. It's uh, what culture wrestling? If you guys haven't seen them, yeah. which why the hell are you listening to a wrestling podcast where you've not heard of what culture? Go watch them. Come on, guys. I mean, we're giving publicity what? to someone who doesn't even need it. Um, right. So yes. Um, my thinking. Samoa Joe's got to win this. Look at yes. just look at the guy's history, right? And we're not just mm-hmm. talking main roster. We're not just talking NXT. Look at what NXT. he's done in his career, right? From Ring of Honor, unbeatable. He was Ring mm-hmm. of Honor champion. Brilliant matches. Absolutely brilliant. TNA, undefeated Became... for nearly a year. Won uh-huh. every championship multiple times. Um, you know, he's yes. been X Division, un- you know, was world team champion. champion with... With tag team champion and X division champion, at the Kurt same Angle, time World with Kurt Angle, exactly. Uh, Kurt World... Angle's IWGP and world champion uh-huh. and other bits. Like he has held practically every championship he has fought for. He's been X division tag uh-huh. team, Ring of Honor, TNA, um, NXT. Every company he has Twice. been in, the he has ever. dominated, and he's the first ever NXT champion. Twice. Yes. This guy is the man beast. He is the destroyer. He is the conqueror. Right? And I'm sorry, I'm sounding like Paul Heyman here, but I will take that as a compliment to myself. I'll take it. Right? Samoa Joe deserves this. Brock Lesnar he... doesn't need it. Brock Lesnar doesn't deserve it, nor does he need it, nor should he have it. What I want to see happen here, right? I can see this match going a few ways, right? We're either going to get the typical Lesnar eat, sleep, suplex, repeat. Mm-hmm. Match starts, couple of punches, suplex, suplex, suplex. Joe counters into a couple of suplexes, tries to go for the coquina clutch, gets suplexed again and again and again and again till he starts getting suplex drunk. Oh, look, F5, match done. Boom. Great. Yeah. Less than five minutes. Or. Now, there's two ways for this or. Hear me out. Okay. And I know that's Every mostly. Every much too young. <laughs> I know that's what this podcast has mostly been. You hearing me out, and I apologise. It's happened all over again. But come on, we get passionate. What can we say? Yeah, we get very passionate about. Um, this. I can see this happening one of two ways. We're even going to go. Joe wins clean. Or. We have something else happen. So Joe wins clean will be, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you get, the suplexes from Lesnar. Joe uh-huh. counters with suplexes of his own because we know he can throw a suplex. Yes. Um, Lesnar tries to run at him. He hits that Uranogi in the corner, slams him down. Lesnar looks up, shocked. Holy yes. cow. He's getting the better of me. He's countering me. What's going on? Lesnar gets up, comes out, comes back in again. Joe slams him down again. Lesnar's looking up. Wait a minute. What's going on? This is just like. Um, Goldberg all over again. Uh-huh. Uh, like this. Goes out of the ring, takes a walk, gets a pep talk from um, Heyman. He's shaken. Lesnar does not know what to do. He has not been challenged like this since he came back. Right? Since his double loss to uh, Goldberg. What happens next? Gets back into the ring. They start going at it again. You get your lefts, your rights, your suplexes. Joe frozen. Lesnar frozen. Everyone starts going crazy. You know, you get the beatdowns. Um, Lesnar goes for an F5. Joe gets out of it, goes for the, you know, slips down the back, goes for the cocaine clutch, locks it. But Lesnar breaks out. Something else happens. Blah, 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 blah. End of the match comes with either somehow Joe being able to get him up for a muscle buster. One, two, three, done. That would be uh-huh. a beautiful sight to see. That'd or you get, you get the cocaine clutch, legit chokes him out. Right, yeah. something like that. The other way I'm seeing it is the match goes semi, somewhat along the lines of what I was just saying. But Joe doesn't win clean. Heyman gets involved, mm-hmm. costs Lesnar the championship. Next thing we know, Lesnar's beaten out. He's been choked out somehow. Like you know, Heyman gets involved. Boom, Coquina clutch, choked out. He doesn't even get to tap. He just gets choked legit choked out not actually to the point where it's a legit yeah. but you know what i mean and Heyman walks into the ring walks over lesnar raises samoa joe's hand in victory joe's a Heyman guy 
We've had yeah. Samoa Joe does exactly the same as what the Big Show did at Survivor Series 2002 to Brock Lesnar in the modern day. He becomes mm-hmm. a Heyman guy. He doesn't need Heyman to speak for him, but Heyman becomes the advocate. You get like the the poor Heyman CM Punk thing. Yeah. Uh, except this time, you know, they can both talk. Lesnar's sort of like on a rampage to come back. Loses again. Like now that he's on his own, he loses. He's done. That's it. Bye bye Lesnar. You know. And then uh-huh. we get um, then we get Roman Reigns and tomorrow with Joe down the line. But who cares about that? But they build Joe to be that destroyer, to be that monster. Mm-hmm. And Heyman behind him can only be a good thing. And they build him yeah. to be that monster of the future. He beat Brock Lesnar legitimately and cleanly. Boom. Paul Heyman behind him is just I see extra. where you've gone with Paul Heyman like kind of interfering. But I think Joe will win clean either with a muscle buster but I think it will be by, ta- by making Lesnar out by putting him out I want to see it happen having him unconscious and then after the match Lesnar is finally waking up he looks up and he sees Heyman with Joe's hand in the air I'd love to see it happen and I want it to happen I mean as long as WWE books it the right way and they don't squash it Mm -hmm. they're booking a dream match perfectly like this has been yeah. a match that so many people wanted to see down like over the years since the days that these bo- guys both uh, debuted. Like when um, Brock Lesnar was in WWE the first time around, and Joe was uh-huh. in Ring of Honor, sort of just about to start with TNA. People were like, "Oh, that that uh, Samoa Joe guy, that he'd be good against um, Brock Lesnar. That'd be a cool match." Then later yeah. on down the line, when Lesnar's in UFC and Joe's doing as well as he is in TNA, Brock Lesnar Samoa Joe would be good, wouldn't it? I could see that making money. Uh-huh. That'd be awesome. Later on yeah. down the line, what happens? Even more years go by. Samoa Joe's become a monster. Brock Lesnar's come back in 2010. I need to see these guys go at it. That's a match in the making. That's WrestleMania mm-hmm. right there. Because this whole feud could go on to Mania. Yeah. I could see this going on to Mania next year. I'd love it to go on to Mania next year. Maybe the title passes between them. A few uh-huh. times. And Lesnar actually makes them more than one appearance. Exactly. Maybe WWE signs a deal with Lesnar where he comes back more and more, not wins the title, goes mm-hmm. away for a month, comes back, defends it, loses it, comes back, wins it, comes back, loses it. I want to see Brock Lesnar back on TV doing a proper job as champion or a proper job as challenger. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're ever going to break Lesnar and Heyman up because without uh, Heyman, Lesnar has nothing mm-hmm. anymore. But I would love to see it happen like that. That would be a mm-hmm. brilliant way to do it. I agree. So I think we're both in agreement with this one. I think the second time during this, yeah, we're both in agreement that we want Joe to win. Except I want to counter that ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. We want Joe to win. I feel I don't don't want to say it. We want Joe to win. Look, I want Joe to win. I've said Joe needs to win, and you've said Joe needs to win. It's the only second copy. That Joe, really Joe uh, winning is my way, prediction. Like I, I'm not going back on this. Joe is my prediction. I want Joe's my to prediction. Win. Joe well. is Joe is my pick. But mm-hmm. I can see WWE booking Lesnar to win, just yeah. so that they have the Lesnar Reigns rematch from WrestleMania. That's what I'm seeing WWE seeing as their future, not mm-hmm. um, Joe Reigns. I'm not seeing that for WWE. WWE wouldn't book that, or at least it doesn't look like WWE would book that as money, and they'll probably have Joe lose. No. So I'm seeing it as. Lesnar's going to win, they're going to go on to SummerSlam, they're going to have the feud, Reigns is going to win, then maybe Joe comes back and wins it from Reigns down the line, Samoan versus yeah. Samoan and blah blah blah. I want Joe to win, I'm rooting for Joe to win, I want WWE to make him win, mm-hmm. but sadly I feel Lesnar's going to win. So your prediction is? My prediction is Joe, my hopes are Joe, but my gut feeling is Lesnar. Right. I'm going with Joe. Yeah. We're both in agreement. We need, we can't, we want Joe to win this. He if he, to win this. 
if he doesn't, I will be extremely disappointed in WWE. Yeah, That's we'll, we'll just tweet you. We'll just tweet you. We'll, we'll never come back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we will. But every time we'll probably be bitching about yeah. Lesnar not being there defending like mm-hmm. on TV. Okay, so now that we've done that, ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to our any other business section, where we want to sit there. We just want to have a, about ten minutes of your time to sit around, have a nice little conversation with each other, and hope that you guys have made it this far. If you guys have made it this far and you're enjoying the conversation credit to you credit to you <laughs> exactly congratulations give yourselves a pat on the back you are doing absolutely brilliantly you're doing an amazing yeah, job yeah an a plus from us <laughs> you get a little gold star for getting this far um if you guys are enjoying the not another wrestling podcast series um please please we encourage you to let us know down in the comments we're not going to tell you to like share and subscribe because if you feel as though you can do that then do it it's your, exactly it's your mind you're not sheep this is, this is your choice. If you want to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, please feel free because we greatly appreciate it and it tells us that we're doing a good job. If you don't like what we're doing, please, please, I implore you to get down into that comment section below and tell us what you want us to change. If you don't like the way we transition through graphics, if you don't like um, the fact that I go on too much and Connor doesn't get to say a lot sometimes, or, you know, if you would rather maybe we get a third person in, or we change up, like, who does it every week. Unfortunately, you have to listen to my voice every week because I, I'm the one who has to host the uh, transitions and everything and host and post the podcast. But, you know, if you have any ideas or if you think it's better to have a solo um, mm-hmm. podcast, let us know. We can get Connor to record one one week and I can record one another one. Um if you want us to have a certain person in every week, like another person from our friends group in, or anything like that, please. Oh, I just feel like we've got we can have, have another podcast to do. So instead of like just wrestling, like, exactly, it could be um, games or something. Well, the Asylum podcast itself, the other podcast that we're doing, we are like uh, that I try to get going every now and mm. then. I am uh, looking into. Um, I've been talking to another streamer actually. This is news to uh, everyone listening now. I've been talking to another streamer about possibly getting a gaming podcast done. On a semi-regular basis, maybe once a month, something like that. Um, if no yeah. one knows him, um, it's Les5150 EVH over on um, uh, over on Twitch. He's a brilliant streamer. Good man. Good man. Um, he's a good man. I will f- hopefully throw his link down into the description here if I can remember by the time this goes on live. Because <laughs> um, I do forget. I apologize for any times that we've mentioned about links and they've not been there. Yeah. Um, hashtag blame J. Hashtag blame J indeed. Um, so... If you guys have seen the, uh, the, the 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 channel, there's been the State of the Asylum Address. I don't know if you watched that. Feel free to give that one a look. Um, we are thinking of possibly doing a live stream podcast at some point for you guys to get involved as it happens over on Twitch. That would be uh, twitch.tv forward slash that Mr. J if you guys want to come over and join us on that. Um, so if you guys have opinions, you can be interactive with us as we do them. Um which is a brilliant thing. I love the fact that we're going to try to get this a little bit more interactive. If you think that we need a better logo or we need an actual logo instead of what I've done with the thing, if you feel that we need to have a set open instead of us just going, not another wrestling podcast in some weird way or another, we can try that. <laughs> so so the absolute tools with the open <laughs> let so us know. What we want you guys to do is get more active. Become um our critics because yes. critics make everything better if you guys don't give us opinions we don't know what to give you so um that will be in said and done guys we have appreciated you guys coming in to listen to the great balls of fire podcast preview so the uh, podcast predictions um hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to make it all the way through if you do like it please feel free to hit that like button if you have loved it feel free to share it see if you've got any other friends that like wrestling and they want to listen to a couple of english you know a couple of uh well an english bloke and a scottish bloke ramble on <laughs> nearly yeah. a couple of english blokes it sounds like a start of a bad joke um, uh we're almost we talking are, about we, we, are we are a bad, bad joke, joke. <laughs> <laughs> you've heard of the bad influence we're the bad joke yeah. um so you know share it if you feel that people need it um subscribe if you want to we don't control you please use your voice vote with your feet vote for your fi- vote with your feet like us if you like us don't if you don't give us your opinions this is what we want from you <laughs> so uh we will be back after wwe great balls of fire or shall we say wwe flaming testicles um 
with the results and everything, we will be giving you guys the brilliant little uh, rundown of what we thought, whether we was right, whether we was wrong, whether Jay wins, whether Connor wins. We will hopefully have a mini championship graphic at that point to show the first ever Not Another Wrestling Podcast champion. Um, nope. And hopefully we'll have some good content for you there. Um, so with that all being said and done, guys, if you want to come catch us live over on uh, Twitch, we are um, that Mr. J and um, I can never remember how to say your name properly, dude. Cottomate. Cottomate, C-O- there you go. C-O-T-I. M8. There we go. Come catch us. We play games. We do it badly. We have fun. We hang out. We so, are basically, as someone said in the stream yesterday, of our now yearly Independence Day stream. Someone said this. We are basically another version of Achievement Hunter, but we're just <laughs> a lot worse. We are the really bad Achievement Hunter. We are the crew. British Achievement Hunter. I have basically been told, yeah, I've basically been told I'm the cabin free of the Achievement Hunter crew. There we go. <laughs> so anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on Not Another Wrestling Podcast. Great Balls of Fire predictions. Hopefully you've made it this far. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourves. Hopefully we have done a really a good, good job. job. Of this. <laughs> exactly. And hopefully we've got you guys interested in the pay-per-view as much as we are. Once again, please feel free to comment down in the comments. Let us know what you think. And we will catch you guys on the next one. So be sure to watch Great Balls of Fire. Catch us over on Twitter, at that Mr. J. Our Twitter will be fighting this one out. <laughs> exactly. But watch us, catch us over there. I've been Jay. He's been Connor. This has been Not Another Wrestling Podcast. And we are out. <laughs>